Whether you're panning, detecting, or sluicing for gold, there's actually gold in the miner's moss, dead center of frames, look at that. It's laborious work that can often leave you feeling dejected. Gazzy does not look impressed. He does not look impressed at all. However, some weeks... You hear that gobble gutsy? Days are numbered because I can suck gold up myself. You'll strike it rich, making all that effort worth it. Woo, yeah. Oh, that's a good little cleanup. See in your sweatpants. It's a bit moist. Just a little bit. We are coming off the back of about 10 straight days of heavy rain. There's not normally any water there at all. That is at least three foot deep over there and that's elevated probably about two meters above the actual creek bed. I can't even begin to tell you just how limiting these floods have been over the last several months. It's already been a day. I got up at 7 a.m. and it's almost midday before we even dipped our first pan in the water. You know what they say, luck favors those who doggedly dig in and try, try again. Well, for the first dip, Ooh, Not yeah. bad. So the problem in Australia is that you either have nowhere near enough water or like way too much of it. And we've got the later problem at the moment. The drift mines are unlike any place I have ever worked before. All the gold is just sitting on the surface. It's not deep. Like the Pele is about that thick at best. So what you're looking for in this desolate landscape, besides an escape from all the mosquitoes, is gravel and concentrators. Anywhere there's river gravel like this, where the water has pushed it into a line, you're gonna find gold. Sometimes it's a little itty bitty piece of gold, and sometimes it's a whole bunch of gold, just like Gadzi. Ah, mosquito in my ear. That would not be the last mosquito in my ear. Yep. Oh, nowhere near as good. But we got gold. That's the main thing. They're only small, but they come home with gobble guts and me. Nom, 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 nom. The first pan I took where I got really good gold was actually from down in here. And there's still some gravel in this little pit. That really red soil is a good indicator of oxidization from heavy minerals as well. So we're going to scrape that stuff up and hopefully get a better pan. Like a sir! Gold's funny like that. Move a couple of centimeters and you can go from getting a few specks to getting a whole lot of specks. Honestly, this one doesn't look much better, but hey, we tried, right? All right, come on, big bucks. Oh, actually, there's a heap of fine gold at the top there. Maybe. A shotgun pellet. Whoa! Yeah! Yep, scraping up the leftovers and we got good gold. See? It's not about the size of your shovel, it's about where you stick it. Got fantastic gold where the big gravels are packed up. We got okay flower gold back here, but it's not worth chasing. And I just got a pan of reasonably good flower gold from this section. I want to know what's underneath this moss, because clearly that has been there for a while. So I literally just cut plugs out. So we can put these pieces of moss back in the hole and that way all that keeps growing. Oh man, the fine gold, holy crap. That's going to be really hard to show you on camera. Great spec count, just not very good size wise. It's just a little bit of a shame. Imagine if they were all chunky bits, but alas, they're not. Black sand bonanza. Yeah. Oh yeah, holy crap. <laughs> Show us the nuggets, Gadzi. Oh, oh, damn, bro. Yeah, that's a spec yeah, count. Yeah. yeah. Man, you're not gonna be buying woodies tonight. No, no woodies. This pan is pure speculation because there was no big river gravels with it, which is usually what we go for, but you never know. How many specs in your speculation? Well, for there to be speculation, there has to be like at least, could I say with five? Doing princess. Oh, yum. Poo mouth. <laughs> oh, fine gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. I. 
didn't think that was going to have that much gold in it, if I'm being honest. That's actually a pretty good pan for the drift mines. <laughs> He's never watched Harry Potter for all the Pottermore fans out no. there. Judge him harshly. No, don't judge me. You're a prospector, Chris. I'm a prospector? Yes, Chris. Your parents were great prospectors. They were murdered. Murdered? How? By who? I don't like saying a name. Gina Reinhardt. Don't make me say it again. Clearly, I've gone to Flower Gold Wizard School. Because the very next spot I checked, I seem to have summoned a whole bunch of flower gold in. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, black sand. I got the feeling we're going to see some good flower gold in here because there is a lot of black sand showing at the back. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that is a fat line of black sand. When in doubt, rapid tap. I haven't even started washing it back and there'd be at least 30 to 40 specks of flower gold up there. Oh my God, look at the flower gold. Yeah, bro. That is a good pan. I bet you're jealous you didn't go to the prospecting wizardry school. Yeah, I am now. Gadzi had a fantastic start to the day, although it seemed he peaked early, and it took him a little while to get back on the gold. What kind of spell did you cast? A very bad spell. Oh damn, yeah, no, that's like the worst pan I've seen you get today! Yeah. My backside is bitten to hell. Yeah, it's... i got no blood in my butt anymore. There, yeah, plumber's crack, mozzie crack. I've just got a flaccid butt now. There's only one cure for flaccid butt. Put him down. You gotta take him out of the paddock and shoot him. Boom. Now that we've taken care of old flaccid butt, back to panning. The drift mines is the only place I've found where it works like this. You'll have these really short pay streaks that might only be two or three feet long maximum and then they just disappear. So if you go past it, you end up with one or two specks. Luckily this shovel's clearly from Manscraped. Attending the Hogwarts School of Mining is quite labor intensive. We've been at this for a number of hours, so this is going to be my last pan for the day so I can go rest my whole wizard back. You're a broken miner, Chris. <laughs> Broke miner? Broke miner. <laughs> Literally see the black sand in the clay. All these like tiny, tiny little pieces of black sand all through the clay that was sitting on the bedrock. All I've done is put clean water in here, tipped all the dirt out of the top riffle, and I got two specks. Usually when there's specks of gold in that second riffle, there was enough black sand and gold to push stuff from the bottom up. And that is a good indicator that we're gonna see some flower gold. Oh yeah, like that. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, bro, <laughs> yeah. Considering we were going to go high banking because we've got a really rich spot to do, and we ended up panning, I think I've had a pretty successful day. I didn't do too many pans in the time that I was here, and you can see the thick, thick cassiterite. Which is exactly why I use a miller table. So until I get this home and on the miller table, this is the best view I can give you of the gold I managed to recover out here. Very fine, but lots of it. Did you have any success gold panning today? Seen your sweatpants? They're nice, that's practically a Reedy Creek nugget, that. Yeah. Look at the size of that thing! But before long, it was time to head home and rest our weary bones. Ready for tomorrow's high banking session. Because we were both praying that the water was going to drop overnight. How moist has this weather been? <laughs> the moistest weather ever. So it's day two, and we're hoping the high bank. We're going to see if the water's down. It's down! Yeah! It's down! <laughs> ah! Same exact spot we showed you yesterday, and this is what it looks like. Hell yes! Creek Jesus! Creek Jesus. Ah. We were praying all night to the gold guys that the water will have dropped because, man, we need, we need to fix this gold fever. Yeah. All we had to do was get the high banker out of the car and the pump running. This side channel here has always been really productive for us, and we've never had an opportunity to work all of it. Well, that's right, a pump with an on switch. If you know, you've been following the channel for a while. First go! Yeah! A massive thank you to everyone on Spider Engineering who helped me solve the problems with this pump. I can get it to turn on straight away. 
Hacks, but engineering's my other channel. I have exclusive content as well as some re-uploads. Link in description. gadzi has been working very diligently to do some test panning to try and define the main pay streak, but we've found gold basically over this whole lot. So, Lord willing, as long as we pump through quantity into this beast, we should get some good gold. High bankers are designed to move a lot of dirt, so if your deposit isn't big enough, it's probably worth just panning or setting up a river sluice. But in this case, we have heaps of gravel to get through. We've been at this for five minutes and just look at how much dirt we've already processed. We're adding two modifications to this high banker in the near future, a Javi riffle and a water leveler. This is going to help us increase our gold take. Which neatly brings me to my next point, check your tailings. Because checking your tailings is really the only way you know if your sluice is set up right. High bankers aren't legal everywhere in the world, but if you are lucky enough to be able to use one of these units, there's a couple of very basic rules that you want to follow. The angle in your sluice wants to be about one inch of drop over every foot of the length of the sluice box. You want enough water to be able to create a nice evenish flow over the top of whatever riffle system you're using. The width of your sluice dictates how fast you can feed it. The wider the sluice run, the more dirt you can pump through at once. The length dictates how long you can run it without having to clean it out. And you only really need to clean these out if you get dirt in your riffles that's compacted. And you can tell that by feeling it. Hopefully that helps you on your next sluicing adventure. He goes, oh, it's a bit warm. And then I look down at how many layers he's wearing. I had five on. Yeah, <laughs> five. <laughs> Old got, senior five layers. I got my sweatpants on today. So. I'd argue that sweating is a good indication that you're working hard. We've only been running for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and we've moved a whole bunch of dirt. We're gonna have a quick sneaky look. Look at the black sand. <laughs> Oh my god. I can see a few little pieces of gold down just here in the miner's moss, but they keep like sinking deeper into it. <laughs> anyway, power! High bankers of this size make low grade ground worth processing because they can move so much dirt. You let Mick loose on floodplains and what he comes back with is chakra aligners. Look at those! That's super cool. Maybe sitting. Yep. That guy can spot a shiny rock from about 30 meters, and I'm not even joking. It's great having such a long hose, but when you gotta go turn the pump off, it takes like six months to walk to it. It's always good to turn the pump off and see a nice flaky of gold sitting in your riffles. There's another nice flake sitting in the riffles. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, oh. Nah, I buried him. Well, as any good prospector would do, we're gonna test tailings. Every single high banker, sluice box or pan loses gold. It's just whether or not it's within tolerance, acceptable levels. I would like to see no more than perhaps two nanos in this pan. Sluice boxes are designed to sort the heaviest things out of the soil. So we're gonna lose black sand because it should be being replaced with heavier black sand or gold. All right, we got one little flake. We actually do have a reasonable amount of loss. We've got one flake here and one, two, three, four, five little nanos. There are a few reasons loss can happen. It can be the pitch of your sluice. It can be how much water you're running. It can be the level of your sluice. It can be clay that wasn't efficiently broken up by the spray bars. The most basic thing that I'm going to make sure of is that this sluice box is perfectly level side to side. And the second thing we're going to do is slow down our feed rate. We've been pushing three shovels per run through before clearing that top hopper. Instead, we're going to do two shovels and then clear it. And that's going to give more time for that hopper to wash any clay and break it apart. I haven't done anything to this pump since turning it off. If it turns on now, then it's holding prime and I've done a good job. Oh yeah! It's holding prime! I love my subscribers. You guys helped me fix something that was very annoying. The World Professional Yeeting Championships. Yeet!
We're gonna have to do a clean out because the ripples are packing with black sand. Like packing real freaking hard. That is ridiculous. I never do cleanups on the creek. I'm just going to take some of the blonde sands off and kind of generally look in the black sand and see what we got. This was just a small piece of miner's moss at the top. I wouldn't know how much gold we'd got till I got home and run it over the miller table. We're not going to know until we run this over the miller table. Very difficult to separate this stuff. <laughs> That's a good little light of gold. That's a nice flake there too. Look at that. There is no physical way of us knowing on the creek how much gold we've got in total. This was only the miner's moss at the very top of the sluice box. And we've seen gold in the riffles, so we know there's more gold in that sluice. Anyway, we'll clean the rest of that out, then more dirt. While we were busy pretending to be Parker Schnobble, Mick was having his own success. How many pans did you do? Eight all up. Eight? Yeah, starry night. Eight pans? Eight. That is looking very healthy. Eight pans. Eight pans. I mean, this might start a gold rush, but eight pans from Ready Creek after floods, that's that's pretty good. This is one of Senor Sweatpants' shovels. Just oh. one shovel. Look at that. Kenzie! Yeah! To work! He's down to a single layer. No, I took another layer. Oh, the strip show continues. I'm gonna start throwing 20s at him to get him naked by the end of the day. Make a break. <laughs> That's a lie, I'm a broke ass prospector. It'll be dollar coins. Ah, dance for me. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, we are getting a bunch of black sands. Gadzi, yeah. I'm gonna make a prediction. Steak and mid shelf or above whiskey. Whoa. Whoa. Power! Gadzi took that statement quite literally. Oh, that's those mountain muscles, man. <laughs> that thing's got away like at least half as much as you. Yeah. Yeah, we've been mining egg a pellet. Got a few nice flakes of gold sitting there. Hi boys. The bullet can go in here. We've been at this for about two hours and we've pretty well done that little side channel. So we're gonna clean out and then we're gonna turn around and work this section, which we know has really good gold from our test panning in previous sessions. And we're gonna see how much was in the top piece of miner's moss. Oh, look at the fine gold that's coming out of that. Yeah, man. Yeah! There's gold all through that. I'm always behind the other two in finding crystals, but I just found one. Oh, well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a smoky quartz. It's a bit smashed to hell, but I'll take it. As ambitious as I was when I said we're going to set up over there, uh, I've, got, I've got pretty severe post-COVID stuff going on right now so we're gonna reclamate the ground and then head home we got to dig the high banker out reclamating is pretty straightforward just make sure everything goes back where it was reclamation is super important even though we're on a flood plane so this would all get washed away anyway the very next flood but we don't want to leave a big pile of gravel so we've just taken all the gravel and flattened it back out over the area that we took it and the very next time it floods that'll settle everything in here and it'll look like no one was ever even here but it was time for home whiskey steak and preparing the metal detector for a hard rock mine senior sweatpants up there and myself have walked all the way up one time because I accidentally lost three gold nuggets in a container somewhere out in the bush. Can't find it, mm -mm. but the gold gods have seen fit to bless me with a few more nuggets. Both of these rocks here have beautiful signals in them. Have a listen. I will be putting these through the dolly pot at home, but I've got another signal on the ground. I would be willing to bet Fern's next dinner that that is going to be another gold specimen. Now, I am working right next to a mine. This is the Waste Rock. 
when the miners took the main vein out, there are a lot of little reefs that go off to each side. And the miners, generally speaking, either didn't see them or they weren't rich enough for them to worry about, so they became part of the waste rock, and that's why we're finding gold in these piles. And what you're going to find is gold in these piles comes in layers. You might hit a layer that's two or three inches thick from them dumping a cart of waste rock all out. In that one cart, there might have been several pieces that get scattered across that layer before it gets covered up by other layers of rock that may not have gold in it. Somewhere here. Scoop. That's a scoop. All right. If it's in this rock, it's a specimen. <laughs> Number three. Well, I lost three nuggets, and now I've found three. Do the gold gods see fit to bless me with a fourth? I don't know. That seems a bit unfair, but we'll find out, won't we? All right. This quartz, that gravelly layer, that's where it seems to be hiding. Oh, if I could show you how steep this actually was, you'd understand why I'm making all kinds of funny old man noises. Oh, I reckon it's that bit of quartz. I reckon it's that. Fernie, bless. Thank you. Oh, that's a good one, too. I don't have a mouth big enough to spit on that, so you're all lucky. It just goes into Fern's food. Oh, yeah. Uh, the 6,000 is telling me there's more in the ground. Gadzi just swore at me. <laughs> it's not all bad, Gadzi. It's against the law, Chris. That is the gold tone on a 6,000. Well, that's a lie. It could be a bit of lead. It's not. It's not lead. I I'll guarantee it. Scope. Very loud now, though. Which makes me think it might be a bit of lead. <laughs> this one? No. This one? No. This one? No. This one? No. Well, it can only be that. That's all that's in my scoop. When everything's covered in dirt like this, it's real difficult to spot Ooh. the gold. Ooh! That's a tasty little bit. Yeah! Oh, Gadzi, come back. I love you. Gadzi wasn't impressed. Mm. I can spit on this one. No apologies at all if you don't like it. <laughs> Big cup, but not my problem. <laughs> there we go. We can actually see a little bit of gold. Yeah, boy. Nice. I just pulled another one out, and there is a nice bit of gold right on the end there. And we've got Senor Sweatpants out here with the STC on a brand new mullet pile. It's never been detected if you don't find gold in that, boy. When you get onto these kind of layers, you don't want to take off like that much dirt. You want to take off that much dirt and then detect everything you took off plus all the new stuff because the orientation of very fine gold ore is everything. You might not get a signal if you go over this rock and there's only a little bit of gold on the underside, but when you accidentally flip it from pulling back, you might actually hit that target. So a little bit to the time. All right, we have a signal. Yeah. Oh, we'll just check the quartz. Nope. 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 Maybe not. Ooh. Ooh, I, I don't know. Before I wipe the mud off it, Fernie, bless? Oh, it is quartz. Yeah, it's a little bit of quartz. I can't see the gold on it, though. There was a whole bunch of mud on that one, but I finally found a little bit of gold that's sticking out the end of it. Look at that. That's a beautiful little specimen. Well, it's certainly not all gravy. This is about the fourth nail I've dug out in a row. If you want gold, you're going to have to dig a lot of iron unless you have one of them to bless your rocks. And even in that case... The sun is going down and it takes at least an hour to get out from this point. So this is going to be my last target before we go back and crush up these specimens. Maybe. I think it might be steel, but maybe. It's not steep at all. Ah, yes. The very tip of a nail. Anyway, to home. Whoa, it's so stable. Oh, Jesus. Seems to be the remoter you go, the more gold you find. But that doesn't make the walk in or out any easier. Parkour! This is Scrub Stuff, and he's been hard at work. 
cleaning all the gold ore I found with the 6000 today. That was the beautiful little nugget that I pulled out that was extremely loud. He polished up to almost nothing but gold, so that's not going in the dolly pot. It took me a little while to spot the gold hanging out with the iron stone in this specimen, but I'm glad that I'm seeing even more as I go through them. And once I got the mud off the rest of them, a couple of them showed us nice little boogers of gold. Look at this rather cute dolly pot a mate gave me. Right, I think we'll start with the small ones first. I can see another bit. Look at that right there. Yeah, boy. That is 100% a gold specimen. I've just spotted another one. Look at that. Oh, wow. This is really pretty gold. It's super bright. That's unreal. It looks almost like foil. Say hello to my chunky friend, the dolly pot. That is really hard quartz. Probably one of the hardest pieces of silica I have ever had to try to break open. That was brutal. Okay, I've been trying for like a solid 15 minutes and I am getting nowhere. So we're going to attack this tomorrow morning when I can use my bigger pot. For it's now. the next day and I've been doing a lot of reading about what makes quartz pink. And apparently it's trace amounts of magnesium, titanium and iron. Which might explain why this stuff is so damn hard. With my big dolly pot, it only took a few minutes to crush all the quartz down to size. Releasing the gold, making me happy. I've got all of the quartz down to that size now, and I don't think it's really going to be worth my time and effort crushing the remainder of it to powder, considering most of it is under 50 mesh. This is the best bit. We're going to see how much gold we got. We know we got a few nice chunks. How much fine gold came out with it? Simply add water to make it bubble. Detecting and crushing hard rock specimens is a lot of hard work and it all comes down usually to a single pan of concentrates. Often there's a lot of fine gold locked up within gold ore. This is why I'm careful to only remove dirt from the front of the pan. Often fine gold will collect at the back line of where the dirt connects to the base of the pan. And if you allow water to take dirt from there, it can strip your fine gold away. That right there is why we crush it so fine. Look how small that gold is. That super fine gold is often where a lot of your weight comes from in gold ore crushes. And if you don't get it that fine, you will not release this kind of gold. It's time. Let's see how much gold I actually managed to get out of those specimens. We know we got some nice bits. You can see them coming out already, poking their head out of the sand there. But I want to see the fine gold because the fine gold is all the bonus stuff. Woo, yeah. Oh, that's a good little cleanup. Nice nuggets. And then a bunch of that super fine micro gold. Wow, look at that! Yeah! Gold when it comes out of hard rock like this is always super bright. It hasn't been exposed to oxygen or rain and it hasn't got that oxide layer on it. That bit right there is particularly bright. Look at that! All in all, not a bad cleanup. And guess what? I'm going to give away one of those gold specimens. That's right. I didn't crush one of the specimens that I found detecting, and I'm going to give it away completely for free. I feel like everyone at some point in their life should have an opportunity to hold a piece of real gold ore. So if you want the opportunity to own this, all you've got to do is leave a comment below. And that's it. And to keep the dopamine flowing, Mark Sheldon over on my Patreon page has won himself a brand new gold rat river sluice, which will be shipped out to you as soon as possible. We do monthly giveaways over on Patreon. It costs a whole dollar to sign up, and the link is in the description below if that's something that you're interested in. There it is, three different types of prospecting with three very different results. Detecting an ore crush, a little bit of casual panning, and a whole bunch of high banking. First we have panning, I'm going to guess quarter of a gram, 0.25. Ooh, a little bit more, 0.31. The high banking, I'm going to guess 1.5 grams, that's probably ambitious, it's probably less. Find out in a second. I don't know, not too far off, 1.06. And finally, our little detecting session, hopefully a gram. There's some nice big chunks in there. 
Not quite, 0.77. For a nice, fat, grand total of 2.17 grams, which is worth about 182 Australian dollars at the time of recording. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears. I'll be peace, and I'm out.